about eight or nine years ago, I saw John Maida, who was at the time the president of the Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, Todd Cleary from Wedding Crashers, he was accepted there, do a keynote on the art of leadership. And he had a slide on how to be original. And I really liked this framework originally by Hillary Austin or, or something like that. But there was this functional identity circle. So they use the example of a painter. So if you're a painter, you're then going to learn about painting. You're gonna go seek this conceptual knowledge or theory on painting, and then you're going to have this experiential knowledge and get your hands dirty and actually paint. And this process is called mastery and it takes a long time for you to master this thing called painting. And then originality comes in after you've mastered painting, you then come back the other way and this process is called originality. So you might realize that your experience about painting doesn't actually match as well as you might have thought the theory of painting and therefore you can now kind of change the theory or realize that you are now being original and that's actually refining the functional identity of who you are. And this whole process you kind of loop over time. You master, you then become original, you master, you then become original and you become something really unique at the end of your life. So that's one way to think about being original. And I really like this. It's a really helpful framework to understand that sometimes there's a difference between theory and experiential knowledge. It doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. You might actually just be original. It's been really helpful for me over time because I often do things that might seem stupid, but I think they're actually original, but they might be stupid. But I've deduced over the last maybe six months or so, I've been thinking about this framework a lot because that's what the cool kids do. I think there's this new school version of originality that's coming in where experiential knowledge and conceptual knowledge are now flipped. And I think people are going from functional identity right into doing or experiential knowledge. And then when they run into situations where they're having issues or something isn't working or they don't know what the next step is, they're then leaning or referencing the conceptual knowledge or the theories that are out there to help them get over whatever hurdle that they're experiencing with the experiential knowledge. And I think this process is actually being original quicker than the other process that I was talking about. If this process is being original, then once you learn enough theory to help with your experiences, this is then the process of sustainability. So if you're a company or a business or an entrepreneur, you jumped right into it and then you're Googling things or YouTubing things as you need them and then implementing those, that process is now making your business or your company or your channel more sustainable than in what it was previously when you kind of felt stuck. So I think this is a new way of being original. And I think this this is actually reflective in the broader sense in our educational system. So traditional education will say, hey, if you want to be a business person, you then need to go to business school for four years. And then once you're out of business school, you then apply for jobs and you get that experiential knowledge and it might take time to eventually be original. The traditional education system relies heavily on the content for you to understand the full amount of theory before getting into the experiential side of things. Whereas the new school way of doing things is only at the moment of need of the theory, do you then access it? And that goes to the reference nature of how we're learning things now. The new school way is, hey, there's so much opportunity with the internet and all of these things. I'm going to start a business tomorrow. I like making cupcakes. So I'm going to make cupcakes for my friends and charge them and kind of make a business out of this, see where it goes from there. And then you get into that and be like, how should I promo, I need to learn about Facebook ads. So then you YouTube or Google Facebook ads. And that is kind of building a sustainable system, but it starts with originality. I think there are some industries where you do need to go through the full theory and experience side of things. So if you're a doctor or a lawyer, I don't want my doctor kind of cutting me open and saying, oh, that's what a kidney looks like. I want him to know what a kidney looks like before he cuts me open. So on the other side of the spectrum, I think there's a lot of industries where you don't need that formal education to dig right into it. You don't need a four-year marketing degree to be an effective marketing person or a marketing coordinator or whatever it might be. And industry is still weighting formal education too heavily. But I see some of these glimpses with industry changing with that one TikToker from Sherman Williams who is coming up with these crazy paint colors. Sherman Williams actually fired him because he, he was kind of misrepresenting their brand. So the traditional marketing side of things squashed that. But this kid grew such a following that he is now working for another paint company doing their social and I'm sure has equity stake in that company and will be growing that company. So I think industry is changing to recognize some of the value of some of this experiential originality that's happening. 
So if you kind of feel that you're bucking the traditional educational or the traditional originality trend, you might not be doing anything wrong. You might actually be original and tapping into this kind of new school way of doing things. Now, this doesn't mean that you can ignore conceptual knowledge or the theory of things that I think a lot of those things are actually still very real, but you might not need it to get you to the 10 yard line, but you might need that conceptual theory to get you into the end zone, to use a football metaphor, because I am a sports person, football. And I kind of felt this tension uh, when I was teaching university this past semester. These kids, I'd be teaching them some of these marketing frameworks and I could see that they don't fully understand the importance of some of these frameworks or how helpful some of these frameworks might be. And they might not be able to use these frameworks until three, four or five years down the road when they're actually in the business world. Whereas if somebody were to stumble across these frameworks on YouTube, who's in the middle of running a business and wanting to organize their business into a marketing plan because they're looking for investment or something like that, these people are gonna find these frameworks much more valuable because the time of need is so sensitive and so pertinent to them. Now, I think the new school way opens yourself up to a lot more risk potentially, but at the same time, as I've been thinking about this, the risk of not acting quick enough in this fast paced culture that we're in might be detrimental to your ultimate business goals. So as an example, TikTok exploded in 2020. If I were to wait for a class on how to use TikTok to come out to really understand the full breadth of all TikTok could do for me, I might have missed the opportunity within TikTok to fully maximize all of that. So I think there is some interesting risks not diving into the experiential knowledge before you fully understand all of the conceptual knowledge that's out there. So again, two ways of being original. Hope that was helpful. Hope that lifts the weight off some of your shoulders to maybe start trying some things and getting into it and recognizing that there are gonna be YouTube tutorials out there. There's gonna be Google to help you out if you get stuck anywhere. And having said that, this is one of the reasons why I declined to teach this year at a university was because I wanted to provide my marketing lectures more as reference materials for those who need it at the moment of need versus teaching 10 kids frameworks that they might not even remember three, four years, five years down the road when it comes time to actually need them. So I'm gonna be starting to record my YouTube lectures soon and start posting them on this channel. If you think that would be good, hit that subscribe button, follow me on all the socials, ask me questions, happy to help. Yeah, go be original and have a good new year.